Here we go again, fantastic games time. That's right, dear viewer. We're back once again with another list that spotlights the very best games. And this time we're looking at the year 2005. When it comes to video games, 2005 really did have it all. From brand new innovative IPs to long awaited sequels, there really was something great for every type of gamer. Before we get into the entries, we'd like to remind you of the rules. A game can qualify for a spot on one of our best of lists if it was released in at least one territory in the year in question and has received at least seven professional reviews. We get our numbers from both Metacritic and Game Rankings, and where the two aggregators have different scores for a particular game, we've gone with whichever is higher. Is all of that making sense? Awesome. Then let's get to the entries. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are the 10 best games of 2005. Number 10, Battlefield 2, PC, 91%. If you take a look through Metacritic's 2005 rankings, you'll see a lot of wartime first-person shooters, many of them good, some of them not so, but none as great as Battlefield 2. The Modern Warfare FPS developed by DICE, sorry, it's in all caps, I had to yell it, and published by EA. The single-player campaign is set in the year 2007, and a world war has broken out. The United States and Europe are at war with Russia, China, and the fictional Middle Eastern coalition. Though the game is slightly light on the details as to how the war came to be, don't ask questions, it just did, okay? Battlefield 2 received widespread critical acclaim, garnering five-star reviews from a variety of publications, and high scores from pretty much everywhere else. In particular, critics praised the design of the game's maps, its well-balanced gameplay, and its multiplayer mode, which many agreed was the very best way to experience it. The game did lose a few points from some outlets, who were disappointed in the number of bugs, but if players could look past them, they'd find a solid wartime shooter with enough content to keep them occupied no wartime pun intended, for many, many hours. Number 9, World Soccer Winning 11-8 International, PS2, 91.12%. It wouldn't be a best games of list without one sporting title, would it? It seems that players were growing a little tired of sports games in 2005 though, as World Soccer Winning 11-8 International, or Pro Evolution Soccer 4 if you want to get Simon Miller guest appearance about this, is the only sporting title that made the top 10. You may think that if you've played one World Soccer Winning 11 title then you've played them all, but the games didn't keep scoring highly with reviewers by doing the exact same thing year in and year out. Admittedly, much of Winning 11-8's gameplay is quite similar to its predecessors, but it did come with some new features that made it worth the price tag. The Master League had been expanded to contain up to 72 teams, there were three fully licensed leagues and over 200 clubs and national teams, referees finally made their way onto the pitch, and tweaks had been made to the edit mode to give players more options. As with those that came before, critics were impressed by Winning 11-8's realistic gameplay, slick controls and great graphics, which all came together to give players a truly wonderful football experience from the comfort of their own homes. Number 8, Shadow of the Colossus, PS2, 91.43%. It's time now to take a wander down PlayStation exclusive alley, as we take a look at Shadow of the Colossus, the action-adventure epic from Japan Studio and Team Ico. Don't worry guys, PlayStation exclusive alley is very well lit and behind a very nice restaurant, so we're all totally safe. I did bring a taser though, just in case. Shadow of the Colossus takes place in the Forbidden Land, and follows a young man called Wanda as he attempts to resurrect the fair maiden Mono by travelling across the region and slaying the 16 colossi that inhabit it. Critics lauded Shadow of the Colossus, offering praise to pretty much everything the game had to offer. Not only was the story exciting and heartbreaking in equal measure, but the graphics and art style were breathtaking, the soundtrack was a delight to the ears, and the gameplay was also a delight. It wasn't just a hit with critics either, as players turned out in in their hundreds of thousands to purchase copies of the game, and it cleaned up at a number of award shows, earning itself accolades for Best Character Design, Best Visual Art and Game of the Year to name just a few. A word to the wise though, if you're planning on playing Shadow of the Colossus, we recommend keeping a box of tissues handy. You might just need them. Number 7, Mario Kart DS. DS. 91.43%. Hold on to your steering wheels and get those blue shells ready, boys, girls and others, because it's time for a spot of Mario Kart. 
For the second time in the mustachioed plumber's karting career, Mario and Pals went handheld, meaning that players could have all the fun of ruining their friend's day with a banana peel, but on the go. Like his predecessors, Mario Kart DS featured a smorgasbord of tracks for players to race around with their favourite Nintendo characters. In addition to this, for the first time in the series history, players could also get together with their mates and play over the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. Critics praised the game for living up to the legacy created by previous Mario Kart titles, and building upon it with exciting new courses, stellar multiplayer, and a variety of fan favourite characters, but did criticise the title for the repetitive nature of its single player mode. Even with that said though, it was still bundles of fun, and frankly, we here at Team Triple Jump are absolutely astounded that Mario Kart DS didn't end up with a higher review score, as it was an absolute slam dunk of a game. We can only assume it got assigned to grumpy reviewers. Number 6, Guitar Hero, PS2, 91.96%. It's not very often that games bundled with a special peripheral end up being anything but a gimmick, but Guitar Hero was very much an exception to the rule. The game came packaged with a guitar-shaped controller and was jam-packed with headbanging tunes, featuring covers of songs made famous by the likes of Motorhead, Black Sabbath and the Ramones. If you liked rock music, it really was the game for you. Critics fell in love with Guitar Hero the second they got their hands on it, with some even going as far as to call it the best rhythm game ever made. The combination of the banging setlist and Genius Peripheral earned Guitar Hero a whopping review score and had fans lined up in their millions to get their hands on a copy. And the gradual learning curve and the ability to choose each song's difficulty setting had them hooked from start to finish. Not only did Guitar Hero go on to spawn a whole bunch of sequels and spin-offs, but it's also been credited with inspiring youngsters to take up the actual guitar, and with boosting sales for the artists whose songs were featured in the game. Not bad for a little SG-shaped hunk of plastic, don't you think? Number 5, Forza Motorsport, Xbox, 93.05%. Here's a fun fact for you. Did you know the word Forza means force in Italian? According to Google Translate, at least. It turns out it's a fairly apt name for the 2005 racing title, though, as critically, it was a Forza to be reckoned with. Okay, now that one was bad. Unlike some other racing games of the time, which often focused on stunts and reckless driving, Forza Motorsport aimed to give players a realistic racing experience. The game came with well over 200 cars that fell into classes ranging from regular old runabouts like the Honda Civic to sports cars like the Enzo Ferrari. There were also a whole bunch of courses, both real and invented, to zoom around at high speeds, and tons of different upgrade options to really give players the edge over their competitors. Forza Motorsport received critical acclaim upon its release, with critics lauding it for balancing realistic racing with accessibility, making it a great game for both casual players and hardcore fans of the genre. They were also pleased with the online multiplayer, the smart AI that learned players' driving styles, and the realistic damage mechanics, all of which came together to create a wildly thrilling experience. Number 4, Sid Meier's Civilization 4, PC, 94%. If you're a fan of turn-based strategy titles, then you'll no doubt be familiar with the good name of Sid Meier, the man behind Sid Meier's Pirates, Sid Meier's Gettysburg, and president of the International Exclamation Point Fan Society. The last one may or may not be true. He's also the mind behind Sid Meier's Civilization, a series of turn-based strategy games that task players with creating and growing their empire. 2005's Civilization IV was no different, setting players about building a civilization of their very own and pitting them against others in order to secure victory. This didn't necessarily entail being the biggest or most fearsome, as players could also decide to dedicate themselves to culture or science, or even to making their world leader the most popular at the UN. The game went down very well with critics, who praised it for taking everything that its predecessors did well and building upon it with better graphics and more intelligent, more difficult AI. They were also impressed by the game's multiplayer feature, which allowed players to compete against their friends to become the most successful empire in the world, rather than just against the computer. Oh man, James has invaded one of my cities, that's not fair. Nuke please. Number 3, God of War, PS2, 94%. Oh goody, it's time for another mosey down PlayStation exclusive alley again. Only this time, we're shining the spotlight on God of War. The game is set in ancient Greece and is loosely based on Greek mythology. Players control Kratos as he embarks on a quest to retrieve Pandora's box, the one item capable of killing the eponymous God of War, who also happens to be responsible for the death of Kratos' wife and daughter. The actual gameplay was heavily focused on combo-based combat, which was made possible by Kratos' Blades of Chaos, and also featured puzzles and platforms 
platforming elements with the odd QTE sprinkled in for funsies. Critics gave God of War glowing reviews, praising its compelling story and action-packed gameplay, as well as the over-the-top violence that gave the Mortal Kombat series a run for its money. There was also a ton of love for the graphics, which one reviewer described as quite probably the best on the PS2, and the dramatic soundtrack, which was the cherry on the top of the mythological Sunday. God of War? More like God of Four, you know, because it's a great game and features one of our favourite video game hunky boys. Double win. Number two, Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell, Chaos Theory, Xbox, 94.02%. Come on, Tom. This is the third year in a row you've appeared on one of these lists. You're gonna have to let someone else have a turn soon. You're just being selfish. For the Splinter Cell series' second sequel, players once again join covert Blops agent Sam Fisher, and this time he's headed out to East Asia in an attempt to defuse tensions and prevent all-out war. Players found that Chaos Theory had a significantly darker tone than its predecessors, allowing them to kill those they're interrogating rather than just knocking them out. Aside from landing the game a mature ranking, this worked in Chaos Theory's favour, as most agreed that the tweak to the series formula made it better than its predecessors. The game also perfectly balanced its story and gameplay, removed some of the more frustrating elements that had fans of the previous titles constantly reloading saves, and brought it all together with top-notch audiovisual presentation. Sadly, Chaos Theory was where the Splinter Cell series peaked, and although its follow-ups have been really good, with the exception of Splinter Cell Essentials, which was utter plops, they've never soared to the same heights as Chaos Theory. And number one, Resident Evil 4. GameCube, 96%. Hey look everyone, it's Leon S. Kennedy, everyone's favourite floppy haired rookie cop. I wonder what he's up to this time. Indeed, Leon made his return in Resident Evil 4, all grown up and working for the US government. After the president's daughter is kidnapped, Leon is sent to a small Spanish village to find out what happened to her. Upon arrival, he's greeted by the locals, who immediately go full torch and pitchfork, and quickly learns that they're all part of a cult that plans to infect Ashley with the Las Plagas parasite so that the leader can take over the world. After some less than stellar entries into the franchise following Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, Resident Evil 4 marked a return to form for the series and shook things up a bit, eschewing many of the survival horror elements that the series was known for and instead taking a more action-focused approach. The game received universal critical acclaim, with the reviewers particularly calling out the story and characters as highlights. Critics also enjoyed the new mechanics and the voice acting, which was considered to be far more competent than the previous Resi games. So without further ado, I hereby crown Resident Evil 4 as the best game of 2005. Well done to all involved.